good morning students so you all know that trees are our best friends now keeping this statement in our minds today let's learn a poem the heart of the tree which will tell us about the importance of trees i shall give you a short introduction before moving into the depth of the lesson the american poet henry cuyler bunner wrote the poem the heart of the tree in april 1893 the heart of the tree is also subtitled as an arbor day song the three stanzas of the poem will tell us about the various benefits of planting a tree the poem will convey the idea that we must live in harmony with nature to stay healthy and happy and this is only possible when we plant more trees now Let's begin with the reading and explanation of stanza 1. What does a plant who plants a tree? The poet begins the poem with a rhetorical question. The figure of speech used here is antipophora where the poet is asking a question and at the same time answering the question himself. The poet tells that planting of trees is an important act next line he plants a friend of sun and sky here the poet considers a tree to be the friend of sun and sky because a tree helps in reducing the temperature it is responsible for rainfall it collects its energy from the sun it purifies the air by producing oxygen and creates a friendly and healthy environment then he plants the flag of breezes free the shaft of beauty towering high the leafy branches of a tree swaying in the breeze is compared to the fluttering of a flag in these lines he also tells the tree standing tall swaying gracefully not only soothes our eyes but also reassures us of its nurturing abilities here shaft means ray or a long pole and towering means standing high he plants a home to heaven and i the poet says the one who plants trees creates a home near heaven and i means nearby for song and mother croon of bird in hushed and happy twilight heard the treble of heaven's harmony mother croon of bird it means a lullaby sung by a mother bird to her baby birds to soothe them now this twilight time is a happy one for the birds because the entire bird family is together and all have returned home safely then a mother bird is singing a lullaby to her young one it is creating an atmosphere which is harmonious and heavenly these things he plants who plants a tree in the last line the poet answers his own question that he has asked in the beginning of the stanza so from stanza 1 we learn the poem begins with a rhetorical question the question is answered with a list of the benefits of planting a tree a tree is a friend of sun and sky the graceful swaying of the tall trees soothes our eyes and tells us of its nurturing abilities Homes for birds are built on treetops 
At twilight, when the bird family is together, the mother bird happily sings a lullaby to the young ones, creating a harmonious and heavenly atmosphere. Now let's move on to stanza 2. What does a plant who plants a tree? The stanza again begins with the same question. And again the poet lists the benefits of trees here. He plants cool shade and tender rain. So the poet is telling, plants provide us cool shade from heat and transpiration from tree helps in the formation of clouds, giving rainfall that nurtures our planet. And seed and buds of days to be. In future, the same trees will provide us with fruits, flowers and seeds. Next, and years that fade and flush again. So here the poet is telling, just like old years fly out giving way to the new ones, similarly old trees die and new ones sprout from the seeds of the old trees. Thereafter he says, he plants the glory of the plain. By this line he means, plain land which would look desolate, neglected otherwise, is filled with glory by the trees in the form of beauty and grandeur. He plants the forest's heritage. The poet says, the planter's act of planting trees today will create a forest of trees in future. Planting of more number of trees will make our earth a healthier and happier place to live on. The harvest of a coming age, the joy that unborn eyes shall see. In the days to come, that is in future, the effects of planting trees are long-lasting. The coming generation will see the trees and experience the joy of having trees all around. Here, the coming generation is regarded to have not yet been born. So when they will take birth and after years, they will see the trees. These things he plants, who plants a tree. The concluding line is also as same as the line in stanza 1. These are the benefits a man gets by planting trees. So, stanza 2 tells us that the rhetorical question is again repeated here. Again, the answer is given with a list of the benefits of planting trees. A tree provides cool shade and brings rainfall. It provides with fruits, flowers and seeds. New trees sprout from seeds of dead old trees. Trees make plain land look beautiful. Next generation will see the trees in their surroundings and enjoy living on a healthier and happier planet. Now. We move on to the last stanza or stanza 3. What does a plant who plants a tree? The poet repeats the same question here. He plants in sap and leaf and wood. This line refers to the parts of the trees that are useful to us. In love of home and loyalty. The poet by this line means, if we are loyal to our own home, neighborhood, planet, we shall definitely plant more trees as all the products produced by trees are useful to mankind and far cast thought of civic good. The poet considers those who plant trees as visionaries. They can foresee the far-reaching beneficial impact on civic good 
or on the welfare of the society. His blessings on the neighborhood who in the hollow of his hand holds all the growth of all our land. By these two lines the poet mean, means sorry, the one who plants a tree is elevated by his good deeds to a stature or position that is higher than that of others. His good deeds are conveyed by the phrases, his blessings, his hand holds all the growth of all our land. He is a man capable of blessing others. Now you will find that the pronoun his, uh, there the H is in capital to show that he is not an ordinary person. By planting trees, he is blessing his fellow men and everything that is around him. He holds seeds, saplings in the hollow of his hands. And when seeds sprout, saplings grow, they contribute to the well-being of everyone. All the growth of all our land. A nation's growth from sea to sea stirs in his heart who plants a tree. A nation doesn't comprise of isolated, demarcated pieces of land only. Mere political boundaries cannot confine the spirit of nationhood. A truly enlightened human being is one who can think of universal welfare. He thinks about the growth prosperity of the entire planet from sea to sea. This feeling evokes a sense of peace and joy in the heart of the one who plants a tree. So what do we learn from stanza 3? We learn that the third stanza also begins with the same rhetorical question. The poet talks about the usefulness of various parts of the trees. Planting of trees has long-lasting beneficial impact on the welfare of the society. The one who plants trees is always blessed by his fellow beings. The growth and prosperity of the entire planet evoke a sense of joy and peace in the heart of the one who plants a tree. Okay, now I shall discuss the figures of speech that the poet has used in the lines of the poem. The first one is antipophora. It is a technique of raising a question and then immediately providing an answer to that question. I have already mentioned this in the beginning of my explanation in stanza 1. The first line of stanza 1, stanza 2 and stanza 3 are examples of antipophora. What does he plant? Who plants a tree? The poet is asking a question and then the benefits that he lists are the answers. Next figure of speech is personification. It is a literary device where inanimate objects and abstract notions are spoken of as having human attributes or qualities. The tree is personified when the poet calls it a friend of sun and sky. Now, I'll move on to another figure of speech, metaphor. It is a literary device which is used in an imaginative way to show that somebody or something has the same qualities as another thing. To take up lines from the poem, we'll find the flag of breezes free, that is, the leafy branches of the trees are compared to a flag 
fluttering in the breeze. The next line, the shaft of beauty towering high. Here, the tall tree is compared to a long beautiful post or pole. Next figure of speech is metonymy. It is a literary device where a word or phrase is substituted by another one closely associated with it. So through the lines that are mentioned here, you will find that each word is a substitute of the real word. A friend of sun and sky. Here, tree is substituted by the word a friend. A home to heaven and I. Here, heaven is referring to the sky. The birds build their homes near the sky on tree tops, and the birds they fly in the sky. So they are always near to the heaven. Next, treble of heaven's harmony. Here, the sounds of birds are referred. The next line, plants cool shade. That is, by planting trees, we get cool shade. So here again, cool shade is a substitute for the word tree. Unborn eyes shall see. Here eyes refer to a child. And in the next line, plants and sap and leaf and wood. The parts of the plants are referring to the whole plant. Similarly, in the previous line, eyes refer to the whole child. Now, I'll discuss the last figure of speech that is used in the poem. Alliteration. It's a literary device where a series of words begin with the same consonant sound. Example, what does he plant who plants a tree? Now look up at the words marked with the red colored fonts. Plant both the P sounds. He plants a friend of sun and sky. Sun and sky beginning with the same consonant sound. He plants a home to heaven and I. Here, he, home, heaven. These words begin with the same consonant sound, H. In hushed and happy twilight heard. Here, hushed, happy, heard. They again begin with the same consonant, H, and the sound is her. The treble of heaven's harmony. Again, the same consonant sound, her. Heaven harmony. Who in the hollow of his hand? Hollow his hand. They too begin with the same consonant sound, her. For today's session, thank you students.